In this section, we're going to briefly go over Victor's various matchups. I could honestly make a separate video for every single matchup, but in order to finish this tutorial sometime this decade, I'm just gonna stick to a couple minutes per character. I'll be talking about what each character's strengths and weaknesses are, what their general game plan is, and what you should be looking out for as a Victor player. I'll also give a small rating on the difficulty of the matchup from a Victor's perspective, out of a 1 to 5 scale. A 1 being completely free, and you should have no problem winning the matchup, and a 5 being, unless you're a masochist, you should probably counterpick. I'll give you a spoiler right ahead. There are no ones. You gotta work a little bit in every single matchup. That being said, this is obviously going to be subjective. I'm not reading this off of a tier list or anything, this is my own personal take on every matchup. I play some matchups more than others, some less than others, and I mostly play online, so that factors in a little bit. But I have picked the brains of other Victor players to get their takes on some of the matchups I'm less familiar on, so I can get you a more generalized idea of how each matchup should play out. We'll be going through these alphabetically by Japanese name, so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. We'll start off with what is most likely the least played matchup in the entire game. Anacharis is the most unpopular character in the game, and for good reasons. To start off, he just controls really weird. He has a very floaty jump, and he doesn't even have a neutral jump. He has a neutral hover instead. The real kicker behind this character, however, is that he's missing basic universal mechanics. Anacharis is the only character that cannot push block. He does not have a normal throw or an air throw either. He only has a command throw, which is fairly slow. On top of that, his guard cancel is the only guard cancel in the game that requires you to use meter to activate it. And it's fucking punishable on hit. It's completely retarded. To say this character is a dumpster fire defensively is putting it lightly. Bullying an Anakaris should be fairly easy. Once you get him blocking, there's nothing Anakaris can do to stop blocking except getting hit. If you keep yourself in frame advantage, then Anakaris is basically shit out of luck. He can't push block you off him, he doesn't have an invincible move, and his fast as normal is like 5 frames. On the flip side of the coin though, when Anakaris isn't being pressured, his pressure tools are actually pretty good. He'll want to fight you in footsies a lot because his buttons are big, and pretty good, especially Stam Jab, that's got a ton of frame advantage on it. He's also got a hella cheap dive kick with the pyramid drop, or whatever the hell it's called. It gives him this wonky Marvel style tri-dash that he can convert out of. He can also do a pyramid drop straight down, whipping on purpose and going for a low, which is a lot of his mix-up game. You should look out for that a lot. Another thing to look out for is Anacharis' curse projectile. At first glance, it looks really slow and shitty, but if you get hit by it, the Anacharis gets a huge reward. Reward. You're basically stuck in an unblockable state where Anacharis can get as many free, unskilled hits as he wants. If you're trying to absorb the Curse Projectile to get yourself some free meter, just watch out and make sure you actually do it. If you get hit, you're gonna lose a lot of health. Anacharis also has a pretty good ground dash. He's able to do whatever normal he wants out of that, including a grounded overhead he gets by pressing 6 and medium kick. One last thing to look out is Anacharis actually has a special anti-pursuit special move. Basically, it's a special move that he can do when he gets knocked down. It sets a booby trap for anyone who wants to do a pursuit attack on him. You get all the time in the world to punish him afterwards if you read it, so yeah, just look out for that. But yeah, that's basically it. Momentum is a factor in every matchup, obviously, but this one especially. Victor and Anacharis have terrible defensive options, so whoever gets the momentum first has the upper hand for the rest of the round. Yeah, just bully Anacharis, really. He's really tall, you can do double heavies on him and a jump in. He also likes to chicken guard a lot, because, I mean, what the hell else is he gonna do defensively? So, bait that out. But yeah, that's about it. Not too hard of a matchup. Fairly even, I would say. Fish is an absolute bitch to fight, and is one of your worst nightmares. I've said it before, but there's no character that really plays lame in this game. There's no real zoner. Fish is about as close as you're gonna get, though. His Poison Gas and Sonic Wave special moves are capture state moves that create huge walls that are very hard to get in on. If you get hit by either of these moves, Fish gets a free extra hit or a full combo that guarantees a knockdown. Fish also has very good air-to-airs, making it very hard to approach him while he's in the air. All of this makes getting in on a fish player extra, extra annoying, and if you play against a good, lame fish, you are going to despise this matchup after you're done. My best piece of advice for approaching a fish is just look at to see if they are charging. Sonic Wave and Poison Gas are both charge moves, so they gotta hold back for about a second to activate them, so just look to see if they're holding back or down back. Fish also has pretty okay approach tools. Normals like Jump Light Kick and Jump Medium Punch have great downward angles on them, making them great jump in tools. He's got an alright dash, and his dash medium punch is plus enough on hit that he can link out of. 
Be warned that his dash actually gives him a low profile, so a couple of normals will go over his head when he's dashing. Once he's in, he's got good frame advantage on all of his normals. He's got two command throws, one that throws the opponent forward and the other one backwards, and a really strong normal throw. You're going to want to push block like your life depends on it, because it does. Once you're in the corner, Fish starts to get really, really nasty. Fish's EX move Water Jail is an unblockable bubble super that he has plenty of time to set up after any knockdown. If you get trapped in the bubble, Fish can easily convert it into a full combo that leads into a knockdown that leads into another bubble into yada 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 until he runs out of meter. If Fixer is cornered, he has no good way of getting out of this setup. It's pretty much a guess. You gotta guess which option Fish is going to cover and react appropriately, but if you guess wrong, you're stuck in a bubble. Now this matchup isn't complete trash, it's just mostly trash. You do have a couple of advantages. Fish's anti-air when he's grounded is lackluster, and his guard cancel ain't worth two shits. He doesn't have an invincible move either, aside for Dark Force, but you should also look out for his Dark Force. It's one of the better ones in the game, it gets pressure off him fairly easily and he gets hyper armor when he does it, so just look out for that. That's the matchup really, just push block like a motherfucker and whatever you do, do not get trapped in the corner or you will die. If you would have asked me five months ago what Victor's worst matchup was, I would have said, without a doubt, Bishamon. However, since then I have had a lot more practice with the matchup thanks to fightcade gods like Sohai and Joss. Bishamon is very tall and very abusable, he actually has the tallest crouching hitbox in the game. His jump arc is slow and not too good, and his anti-airs aren't very good defensively. If Bishamon starts blocking, you can definitely bully him, but be careful because his guard cancel is actually fantastic. On the defensive end, Bishamon is just okay, but he really starts to take off once he gets pressure started. His normal slow anti-airs become giant unpassable walls when dashing forward. His dashing pressure is very, very good, some of the best in the game in fact. His dash jab and dash short leave him point blank with a lot of frame advantage, allowing him to push a throw mix up. He's got a nasty command throw alongside of his normal throw, so look out for that. Bishamon's able to convert into pretty big damage off of any stray hit. Pretty much all of his normals can be linked into all of his other normals, which then can be special cancelled to his soul throw or his uh his uh, sonic boom slash thing, I don't know what that thing's called, but all of that does crazy good damage. And since it's all linked, it's much harder to guard cancel, so you either have to get really good at firsties or get really good at push blocking, and push blocking is much easier to get good at. A lot like Fish, you want to stay out of the corner if at all possible against Bishamon. He also has an unblockable setup. His ES soul throw thingy, if done at a very specific range, is completely unblockable. The follow up puts his opponent into a knockdown that they can't tech roll out of. And if they're in the corner, Bishamon can just stash up, get to that perfect spacing again, and throw another ES soul throw. This could be looped indefinitely until Bishamon runs out of meter. You'll see a lot of Bishamon saving up all their meter for this, so really do watch out, do not get cornered. The plus side for you here is that it's a lot harder and more specific to set up than Fish's water jail loops. If they're off by even one frame, that gives you enough time to pop a dark force and get out of there. One more thing I want to talk about in neutral is that Beachmon will like to throw out a lot of soul throws just to try and get you caught and then get in. You might be tempted to absorb this with like a Lariat or one of your normals, but I'm telling you right now, just don't do it. Beachmon recovers the instant that fireball disappears, which means he can actually punish you by throwing another fireball for absorbing his fireball, which I've had happen to me. It's really fucking annoying. But yeah, that's about it. Same notes as fish, really. Just push block a lot and try not to get cornered. <laughs> Bleda is one of the most versatile characters in the game. She's got a fantastic movement speed that, with mastered, can allow her to be at any place at any time. This alone allows her to be played in pretty much any way the opponent wants to play her. On the defensive side, her zoning abilities are above average. She's able to shoot missiles at you from multiple different angles and speeds, making them very hard to predict. All of these can be absorbed, but shooting a low missile has to be absorbed with a low normal, not a lariat. And if she shoots an ES low missile, there's pretty much nothing you can do to absorb that. Her jump back roundhouse is a very annoying normal to get in on. She shoots a mine from under her dress, and the hitbox is just in such a perfect place that it's just hard to jump in on. Not to mention, BB Hood is the only character with a double jump, so she can play as chicken as she wants to with this. In most matchups, Valetta's cool hunting super isn't super useful. It's okay to call out someone jumping with it every once in a while. However, against Victor, it's a lot better. Most characters can just stand under it, but not Victor. He's so damn tall that he always gets hit by it if he's standing. If you're caught crouching underneath this move, don't move at all or you will get hit. 
Also, it's basically unpunishable for Victor unless they're already within sweep range when you're crouching under it. Now, Boletta offensively is a whole different story. This fucker is unbelievably oppressive. Pretty much every single normal she has is plus odd block, and plus by a whole lot. She's got the best dash of the game, bar none, honestly. Her dashing normals all leave her fucking insanely plus on hit and on block. So much so that she actually has an infinite that people can theoretically pull off. She can hit a stand jab and then get a random bonus into a dashing jab, then to a stand jab, do a random bonus into a dashing jab until you die. On most characters, this only works if they're standing, but Victor's so big crouching that it will always work on him. This means theoretically anytime you get touched, you're dead. Thankfully for you, this infinite is very technical, and even the best BB Hood players can only get a couple reps in consistently. Outside of dashing pressure, she has a really annoying instant overhead with her jump medium punch. She also has a very, very good command throw, which, I mean, I don't know why they would give a command throw to a character who can dash that well, but whatever, that's the world we live in nowadays. One thing more to talk about is BB Hood actually has an unblockable setup. Her jump roundhouse if hit very, very late can keep you stuck in a standing block. Then she can fall down and hit you with a low attack and you can't block it if you were already stand blocking. The way to beat this is to crouch block her jump HK. That's actually a mid. Be extra wary of people trying to do this because it's not real. You can get out of it. A couple of benefits that you have is that Boletta's anti-airs are basically non-existent. She can't do anything to stop you from approaching in the air except meeting you in the air herself. Also, her guard cancel doesn't actually have a hitbox, it's basically just a teleport, so it's situationally okay, but you won't see a lot of BB Hoods using it. But yeah, that's the matchup, really. Learn how to beat chicken guarding, and if I haven't labored this point already, push block, push block, push block. It's the only way to keep these characters off you. Come on, baby. Dimitri's one of the few matchups I would actually say Victor has a slight edge over. It's not because Dimitri's bad, Lord knows he's much better than Victor. It's just that Dimitri's kit doesn't have really anything that bullies Victor as much as some of the other characters. His fireballs are pretty slow and predictable, and basically a non-issue for Victor, since he can absorb all of them fairly easily. You'll get hit by a jump back fireball every now and then, but honestly, Victor's absorb feature just nullifies Dimitri's traditional zoning strategies. Dimitri's footsies pale in comparison to yours, your buttons are just so much bigger. His best footsie button is his sweep, which does go pretty far, but actually hits mid, which means you can pretty safely just stand block everything as long as you're out of crouching medium kick range. A lot of Demetrius will try and do counter footsies against you, while they'll throw out DPs in neutral to try and catch one of your footsie buttons. Dimitri's Dragon Punch, Demon Cradle, is definitely one of the core tenets of his gameplay. The light one especially is insanely invincible. For any super turbo players out there, it's comparable to old Ken's light DP. It's invincible pretty much on the entire way up, and it's fairly hard to whiff punish or just straight punish. Demetrius will honestly just randomly throw this out neutral all the time to build meter or catch buttons or what have you. It's really, really good. Demon Cradle also serves as Dimitri's guard cancel, giving him one of the best guard cancels in the game. Anytime you're trying to jump in or pressure Dimitri, you should always expect him to try and do a Demon Cradle. If you get your opponent's rhythm down, it's not too hard to bait these out and punish. Now, Dimitri's movement is honestly pretty clunky and hard to get used to. His dashes go very, very far and are invincible for the majority of the animation. He can special cancel these dashes with a DP, a fireball, an EX move, or whatever have you, but he can't cancel his dash with a normal like any other other character with a grounded dash. This makes his approach options a little weird. His jump is okay, but his aerials are kind of crap, especially for air-to-airs. I will say jump medium kick is a very reliable cross-up button, though. He does have kind of a weird dive kick with his bat spin special move. However, unless Dimitri spaces it absolutely perfectly, this thing is insanely punishable on hit. Most Dimitris will just use bat spin as a movement option instead of an actual attack, but if you do end up getting hit by it or blocking it, you can always pick up a small punish afterwards. Also, his ES bat spin is always safe on block, but it's basically begging for a guard cancel since it hits about 8 times or something. Once Dimitri's pressuring you, he has a couple of decent options. He's got a command throw that's pretty damn good, and he can cancel his dash into his command throw. His normal throw is very good too, he has a fantastic option to select with his close heavy punch and his heavy punch throw. Dimitri also has two EX command throws, with Midnight Bliss and Midnight Pleasure. Now Midnight Bliss has a little bit of startup, so you won't see it all that much, but Midnight Pleasure starts out almost instantly. It's an input style stupor, kind of like a raging demon. You get it by pressing light punch, medium punch, forward, medium kick, medium kick. It also requires two bars to activate, so you always want to pay attention to Dimitri's meter. 
Desert. A semi-decent Dimitri player will try to land Midnight Pleasure as much as possible. The damage on it is really, really good. Midnight Pleasure is great for catching tech rolls, since it will autocorrect if the opponent rolls behind you. Try not to tech roll in as much when you see the opponent has two bars or more. Also, it's a dead giveaway if you see him buffering the input. Since it's a Raging Demon style super, it can be special cancelled from chains. So look out especially when he's pressuring you with chains. He might be trying to buffer the input. Other than that, I don't really have too much to say. Just try not to get grabbed, absorb some fireballs, and try and jump and block a lot to bait demon cradles. Also, this is one of the matchups you want to use more links than chains. It makes it a lot harder for Demetri to guard cancel, and lord knows you don't want to eat that DP. Felicia overall is just a very solid character, no real weaknesses and very strong fundamentals. Pretty much all of her buttons have some sort of use, either in footsies or anti-airs or what have you. Her stand medium kick, crouching medium punch, and stand roundhouse are all really damn good footsie buttons. Stand roundhouse, in fact, is lower body invincible, which means it can counter poke some of your lows. She's got a plethora of good anti-airs, with stand light kick, crouching medium punch, and crouching heavy punch. This makes her one of the few characters that can reliably deal with your jumping fierce pressure. I'll tell you a little secret that Felicia players don't want you to know though. Her crouching heavy punch is actually considered airborne and you can air block it. Now Felicia's jump is incredibly fast, has a great jump arc, and it's just really obnoxious to deal with. Again, in the vein of Felicia, pretty much all of her jump normals are fantastic. Jump Heavy Punch is honestly just amazing, Jump Heavy Kick has a huge horizontal hitbox, and Jump Medium Punch hits twice. If you want to react to a jump in with like a crouching electric fierce, you have to have really strong reaction types, her jump is really fast. I stick to non-electric anti-airs just because they're faster and more reliable in this matchup specifically. Now Felicia is the first character we're covering that has a hop dash. These type of dashes put the opponent airborne when they're dashing at you, allowing them to do instant overheads. All of these are really fucking annoying for Victor to deal with. Thankfully, the opponent can't usually convert into full damage if they do it instantly. They'll have to delay their dashing normal just a little bit to get the full confirm. This takes the instant out of their instant overhead. Well, everyone except for Sasquatch, which, trust me, we'll get into. You'll see a lot of Felicia's do a slightly delayed dash medium punch, since it hits twice and it's the easiest to confirm out of. Just remember, it's two hits, you gotta block high twice. Which also leads to a small mix-up where they can do a different dash normal that only hits once, and yada yada yada, yeah, you get the deal. Felicia has really dumb pressure tools too. The light version of their cat spike special move is comboable from their mediums, leaves them point blank, plus two on hit, and plus one on block. You really gotta respect this, there's not a button fast enough you can press that will beat Felicia if you both press the button at the same time. And the fact that it leaves her point blank means she can push a throw mix up afterwards also. Get really good at push blocking or guard cancelling this cat spike, cause if not, you're gonna get bullied. The medium and heavy version of cat spike gives them more frame advantage, but it's uncomboable and doesn't leave them quite as point blank, so you won't see them as much, but you do wanna respect them if you do get hit by them. Like pretty much every other character, Cat does have an unblockable command throw. It's just another layer to her mix-up game. It's pretty good. Watch out for it. Now, when Cat's being pressured, she has a couple of tools to get you off of her. First off, her guard cancel is her delta kick, which you won't see normally, but as a guard cancel, it gets extra invincibility frames on startup. However, if the initial hit doesn't hit you, it's pretty punishable, so make sure you capitalize on that. Secondly, her Dancing Flash EX move has about 8 frames of invincibility on startup. Now, this move is very, very unsafe, but even some of the best cats just say fuck it sometimes and throw it out and randomly see if it will hit. Lastly, Felicia's Dark Force is one of the best in the game. You're gonna see it used a whole lot. It will send out a second kitty helper that will hit in tandem with Felicia's attacks. If the opponent knows how to control it, they actually can get loops off of this that will last as long as the Dark Force lasts and net them a huge amount of damage. However, Felicia's deactivation on her Dark Force is one of the longest and you can easily pick up a punish off of it. So if you weather the storm with all your pressure, you'll be rewarded for all your defense. But yeah, that's about the match. Up, she's just a solid character overall. She's one of the least technical characters in the game to play, so you're definitely going to see her a lot, so know this matchup well. <laughs> now, Wolf is fast, and I mean really fast. He's got the fastest walk speed in the game, forward and backwards, and by a very large margin. His jump is just as good, if not better, than Felicia's jump. It's really fast and hard to react to. Wolf's just one of those characters that can be anywhere in the screen in half a second, and there's not much you can really do to stop him. He's got the second shortest crouch in the game, allowing him to crouch under a fair amount of your standing normals. His hitbox is actually shorter when he's walking around as well, allowing him to walk under a lot of different projectiles. This doesn't affect you as much, but I felt like I should say it nonetheless. Now, wolves tend to operate in two different modes. They're either very pokey or very aggressive. 
On the more neutral base side, Wolf has a lot of very good long-reaching normals. His crouching medium kick, standing medium kick, jumping medium kick, and jumping heavy kick all have huge range and it's really annoying to get in on. His crouching medium punch can also be used as a fairly okay long-range anti-air. Wolf can also get in pretty much whenever he wants with his stupidly fast jump and great jumping normals like light kick and medium kick. Like Felicia, he also has a hop dash that he can also get instant overheads off of. If you're particularly tall, which Victor is, he can do chains out of his dash with dashing light kick, dashing like punch, or dashing medium kick and dashing light kick. These are double overheads and annoying to block, so be careful about that. You'll see a lot of Talbanes do like an instant dash heavy punch or heavy kick and then immediately go for a throw afterwards. You'll pretty much only ever see Talbanes use his kick throw because it's stupid. He does like 18 barrel rolls and then throws you in the corner and it has really stupid corner carry. If you ever get grabbed by this, whether or not you tech it, you're pretty much guaranteed to already be in the corner. Also, he has a great option select with his close heavy kick and his kick throw, so you can't really jump out of it all that easily. Once Talbanes is in your face, he's got a lot of fast ass normals that can into really big damage super easily. Just his regular chains do good damage on his own, but the real kicker is his Beast Cannon. This is one of the easiest and most rewarding special moves in the whole game. The normal one is two hits. The first hit always goes straight or diagonal up or diagonal down, depending if they do it in the air or do a DP motion to do it. But the second hit can be controlled to go into any of the eight cardinal directions, making it super easy to hit both times. If you cancel one normal into Beast Cannon and get it to hit both times, you're already doing a third of a light bar in white damage. Now the ES version is where we get really pants on head retarded. This move has four follow-up hits that all can be controlled in eight separate directions. Hitting all these follow-ups will melt half your life bar away, so you really, really never want to get hit by this. Beast Cannon is also Wolf's guard cancel, which sounds terrifying, but honestly, it's not that good. It always comes out at that up-forward angle, which is less than ideal for hitting grounded characters. Also, guard cancels only do half the damage of normal special moves, so like an ES guard cancel is not going to do half your life bar. I do want to mention really quick that the air version of Beast Cannon can be used as like a mini dive kick. I see a lot of wolves jump back a lot just to bait you to try and chase them in the air, then they do an ES Beast Cannon like a dive kick, hit five times, and bam, there goes half your life bar. A couple other notes about Wolf's pressure. Wolf has a uh, command dash with quick move. This can be canceled out of his normals to kind of gain a little bit of ground. It's super fast and hard to react to, so he'll steal his turn a lot with this. Also, Wolf has a command super, an input super with a moment slice. And I said before, but any of these command supers can be cancelled through chains, so we can chain into this and just do pretty good damage easily. But the range on it is fairly bad, so you're not going to see it all that much. Wolves only really do that if they get a cross out to start their chain. But what can you do as Vic to pressure Wolf? Well, you have a couple of options. Your crouching medium kick is pretty good in this matchup. It's contestable with Wolf's crouching medium kick. And Wolf can't duck under it, so that's an extra bonus. Wolf's anti-airs aren't that great. He has, like, Crouching Fierce, which is pretty slow, or Far-Reaching Crouching Medium Punch, but that's about it. Both of these make his defenses options not super great. Alright, but all in all, Wolf is a very popular character. He's by far the easiest character in the game to learn. This is definitely a matchup you want to grind, because you're going to see a whole lot of wolves no matter where you go. <laughs> Now I don't want the footage here to fool you, Jetta is not that great of a character. However, for this match I'm playing Dine, who absolutely is one of the best in the US, and a really crazy good Jetta. He's a testament to being able to win with whatever character you want to play. Jetta himself, however, takes some work. Jetta is tall, slow, weak, and awkward to handle. One of the most apparent things you'll notice when fighting Jetta is that he doesn't have a way to combo into a knockdown. His sweep does not actually knock down, in fact the only normal he has that knock down is Stand Roundhouse. Stand Roundhouse is an overhead, but it's very, very slow and reactable, so you don't really need to worry about it too much. Jetta isn't really a combo character, he's more of a mix-up character. Jetta has, like, a jet dash with his ground dash. It propels him off the ground and allows him to do overheads. It's kind of like a hop dash, but you can control how far you go. It gives him a pretty decent high-low mix-up game. He's also one of the few characters in the game that actually have a decent left-right mix-up game. Not a lot of characters have guaranteed cross-ups, but Jetta is definitely one of them. A couple aerials to look out for is his medium punch and medium kick, which both hit pretty far below him. His aerial heavy punch is great for zoning since the range on it is huge, and his heavy kick is a big hitbox that surrounds his whole body, and it also halts his aerial momentum when he uses it. Since a Jetta can't reliably knock you down, his gameplay is more based off of resets and block strings. When grounded, however, Jetta's buttons aren't nearly as good. Standing and crouching medium punch are pretty good for zoning, but standing and crouching heavy punch are just terrible. These can be up to minus 27 on hit. It's kind of stupid how bad it is. 
Crouching Medium Kick is your go-to anti-air. It creates a little splash that hits people out of the air. And Crouching Light Kick is a very fast and very long-reaching low. You want to look out for that. Any combo Jetta actually does usually ends in standing Medium Kick, because it leaves him plus one on hit. I also forgot to mention, but Jetta's Air Dash is very strange in the sense that it actually has a hitbox coming out. The Air Dash itself isn't good, and in fact, this is one of the few matchups where headbutts do a lot of work because you can just smack that Air Dash out every time with a headbutt. Jetta's Pinwheel special moves look pretty scary. It hits three times and controls a lot of space. However, the hitbox is very deceptively small. It really is only in the center of the actual pinwheel. You don't have to respect Jetta's when they're throwing this out in block streams. You can just hit them. It takes forever to come out. He also has this swipe attack special move. It's called Nero Fatasia. Uh, something Italian. All of his names are dumb for his moves. It's an unblockable attack that's pretty fast. It comes out in 11 frames. However, the hitbox is so high that every character can crouch under it. That's how you get around this, and you just crouch. Jetta's two EX moves are both unblockable grab supers. The contract one you actually have to guide and hit someone with, but the blood pit one tracks the opponent instantly and just grabs them out of the ground. Both of these only grab grounded opponents. You can jump to get out of them, or even use minimum step to get over them. And they're horrible when with. Both of them have super long recovery time. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Jetta's Dark Force, aka the Dying Force. This is Jetta's ace in the hole. This Dark Force is actually kind of amazing. It starts up in only 26 frames, which compared to your Dark Force is a full half second faster. Jetta immediately flies up in the air and is able to fly around and do air chains. The startup on this is fully invincible and he's able to act almost immediately afterwards. The flight gives him the ability to do air chains and a lot of extra pressure than he wouldn't be able to otherwise, and gives him just a lot of free movement in the air. The real kicker here is that it has no deactivation time. It is completely safe to deactivate. Anytime Jetta has a bar and is in a disadvantageous position, you should expect him to mash Dark Force. If you don't react to it or bait it out, there really is no downside just to popping this whenever you feel like it. Jetta is able to fly over your Crouching Fierce hitbox when he's in this state. If you see him playing to the top of the screen, use Standing Roundhouse and instead, that'll hit him out. Other than that, this matchup is pretty even. You can do all your dumb Victor stuff to Jetta, you just gotta make sure you're baiting out his Dark Force whenever he's trying to do it. A 2.5 out of 5 on the difficulty scale. Unless you're playing Dine, then it's a 10 out of 5. <laughs> I get a lot of flack for believing this matchup is even, but I truly, honestly believe so, and I'm going to try to tell you why. My main point of contention here is that Lele's approach options are bad. Her walk speed is atrocious, and you'll never see a Lele walking around. Her forward dash is a lot like Dimitri's, where it's like a teleport dash, but it's not nearly as good. Lele's jump is average, and her air dash is pretty slow. It's got a little bit of startup at the beginning, where she can't do anything out of it, giving you enough time to intercept her air dash. She also has this chain swing move that can move her forward, and also be cancelled to launch her across the screen, but anytime you see her start that up, you just do HP Lariat and it'll beat it 100% of the time, I promise. All these options are interceptable and not too hard to react to if you're playing neutral correctly. You just gotta play lame. I'm telling you, nobody plays lame in this game. They, a lot of people just don't know how to deal with it. If you play lame, you can get away with a lot. Now, Lele does have projectiles, and you don't, so she can play a little lamer than you, but they're not too hard to deal with and you can absorb them. Now, something you do have to look out, though, with her item throw is that she has a random chance to throw an item out that will stun you. Actually, I should say kind of random. There is a true random chance that one of them will pop up, but there is an item rotation that you can look out for. I don't know the full item rotation list, but the one thing you have to look out for is if she throws a white Akuma statue. If she does that, the next item she throws with medium punch or heavy punch will guarantee stun you if it hits. If she throws an item with heavy punch, this item counts as an overhead when it hits. She can use this to set up unblockable setups off a of knockdown, so do look out for that. Some other okay tools she has in neutral is her forward heavy punch, which is a huge anti-air. This thing comes out pretty slowly and has a lot of recovery, but I mean the pure horizontal distance this thing covers is insane. Her sword's ES move also guarantees her a little breathing room, but she has better things she's gonna spend her meter on, which I'll get into in a minute. Pressure-wise, she's pretty okay. She's got the air dash mix-ups and all that, and a couple of nasty meaty tools. Especially ES Gong. That thing hits multiple times and is fantastic as a meaty. The real shit, though, the real, real shit that makes this character is her Super Tenraiha. This is the best super in the game, in my opinion. It comes out super duper fast, the initial hit is an overhead, it creates a shockwave that'll knock down that covers the entire 
entire ground. And then it will drop a whole bunch of spike balls from the ceiling on you in a random pattern that leaves you blocking forever. The super really does it all, honestly. It's a mix-up within itself since it comes out as an overhead. If you're stuck blocking the balls, you're stuck in block stun forever, leaving the Lele to get free mix-ups off of you. If you actually get hit by the super, it just does ridiculous damage. Lele has a huge damage output because of it. And the super could be cancelled from chains since it's an input command style super. If Lele has a bar, she's going to 10 Raihal. There's no reason not to 10 Raihal. Even from full screen, it can create some pressure to get in. It's insanely good. One last thing I want to talk about is Lele's Dark Forest, just because it's really different from every other Dark Forest. It starts up kind of slow, but then she gets hyper armor that goes through everything once you start up. She absorbs every single attack, she cannot be stunned, and she cannot be thrown. All the attack she does does permanent damage instead of white life damage, and she actually gets to walk around like normal on the ground. It does have some downsides though, she can't use specials when she's in Dark Force, she can't air dash or block, and the recovery time is solely based on how far away she is from her sister when she deactivates. If she's right on top of her, it's as slow as 5 frames, but if she's farther away, it can be a long, long ass time to deactivate. That's all I can think about talking about Lele, but really, honestly, just play this matchup lane. There's a handful of matchups that are just way better if you play lame, and this is one of them. Showtime! Now Lilith is a very straightforward character without any real gimmicks or mix-ups. Her game plan is all about dash pressure, tick throwing, fireball pressure, and landing her very powerful EX moves. Lilith doesn't have any reason to really be playing defensively. Her normals aren't that good and her fireball doesn't go anywhere. She'll be trying to get in at all costs just to start her pressure. She has some decent tools to get in, primarily her super jump. If she super jumps, her jump goes way higher and farther, allowing her to clear a lot more distance in a single jump. She's got decent jump normals with jump medium kick, heavy punch, and heavy kick. Medium kick and heavy kick has the ability to cross up, so watch out for that. Once she's in, she's going to keep herself at frame advantage as much as possible. Though her normals don't have great range, pretty much every single one of her normals leave her plus on block. She's one of the few characters that really, really benefit from Renda bonuses, because it makes her even more plus on block and on hit. Also, when she's dashing, her normals naturally just get a little more frame advantage, too. Honestly, it can feel pretty oppressive, not knowing when you're able to press buttons. I'll give you my little secret, though. Just neutral jump. If Liliths are dashing in, there's not much they can do about that. She's got other pressure tools, too. Primarily, her Light and ES Soul Flash Fireball. Both of these are very, very slow and act as kind of a wall. What Lilith lacks in overhead and low mix-ups, she makes up for in pressure and tick throw setups. Her Heavy Punch throw is a very, very good option select with her close standing Heavy Punch, meaning you can't jump out of it very easily. The real meat and potatoes for Lilith, however, is her Luminous Illusion. This is a command style ES move, meaning you can cancel it from chains. It's fast enough to cancel from pretty much any button. If the Lilith you're fighting has the technical prowess to use this, they will use it all the time. The damage is huge and honestly demoralizing if you ever get hit by it. Any combo Lilith lands can get confirmed to the Luminous Illusion and then you're just losing half a life bar for nothing. She can also cancel the recovery frames of some of her more minus normals, bait you into punishing it and then hitting the Luminous Illusion. This is seen most often with her sweep. Her sweep is super slow and really bad, but if you try and punish it, you might just get hit with an EX move and die. That's about it, honestly. This matchup's not too hard, you just gotta duck and weave around Lilith a lot. One more small thing I want to talk about is that her DP is invincible on startup, but not invincible when the hitbox comes out. This means it trades a lot with jump-ins, and it's our only really decent anti-air, so she has to trade to anti-air a lot, so yeah, take that as you will. <laughs> Morgan will give you a lot less trouble than her flat-chested counterpart. Honestly, Morgan just kinda sucks. Most people who start with playing Morgan just switch to Dimitri at some point in time. With a few exceptions, all of her normals are pretty much identical to Lilith's. They share a lot of the same frame data, too, meaning Morgan is plus on pretty much all of her normals. However, unlike Lilith, she doesn't have a normal ground dash. She has that jet dash that Jetta also has. This means she actually has high-low mix-ups, unlike Lilith, but her pressure is a lot worse. Her dash takes takes a good bit to start up, so you can easily see it and react to it. Unlike Lilith, her fireballs actually do go somewhere, so she can zone you out with them. But, again, being Victor, you can just absorb them, so this is more or less nullified. Her air soul fests do come at a weird angle though, which is a lot harder to absorb, so look out for those. Now Morgans want to go for grabs a lot more than pretty much any other character, and I'll tell you why. There's actually a glitch with her heavy punch throw that even if you tech it, it will always do the max amount of damage. This pairs greatly with her stand close heavy punch, 
Punch, which is exactly like Lilith, a fantastic option select that will hit people trying to jump out. That's one of her best ways of getting damage, so you should always be wary of her trying to walk up throw you. However, this is inherently risky, and Morgan kinda sucks at taking risks. Her defense is so fucking low, it's the worst in the game. She's basically a piece of tissue paper with titties on it. The sheer defense gap between Victor and Morgan is insane. Victor can pretty easily win the War of Attrition here without really having to do much. Now, Morgan has a command super just like Lilith, it's her Darkness Illusion, or DI for short. DI is functionally the same as Lilith's LI, it can cancel from chains, has almost no startup, and nets you a nice damage increase on any stray hit you might get. It does less damage than Lilith, unfortunately, but Morgan still should be using this in every single combo. One last thing I want to talk about is Morgan's finishing shower move. This move is incredibly slow to start up, so you're not going to be seeing it in combos or in neutral all that much, but it does a huge amount of chimp damage and Morgans will often try to chip you out with it. She's also plus on block, full screen, and some will try to do a cryptic needle right after to do kind of like a full screen frame trap, so just don't let them do that, it's a stupid gimmick. But yeah, that's about it for the Succubus. Really not that hard. Probably your easiest matchup overall. <laughs> and we take a sharp turn from Victor's best matchup to his worst matchup. B is an absolute nightmare. This matchup is very fundamentally flawed and just terrible for Victor. The first thing I want to go over is QB's crouch. She crouches so fucking low to the ground. So low, in fact, that most of your standing normals will not hit her. If you're standing and QB's crouching, you're limited to close medium kick, far medium punch, or close heavy punch. That's it. That's all. None of your lights will hit her, and the normals that do are either specifically far or close normals. If you're trying to hit her with, like, close medium kick and she's too far away, you get far medium kick, and now that won't hit her. It's just a little farther away, and you want to hit her with far medium punch, maybe she moves in a little bit. You get close medium punch. That won't hit her. Close heavy punch turns the far heavy punch and she's too far away, and that leaves you open for eight years. So you say, oh, whatever. I'll just start hitting her with crouching normals. That's how I hit her. That's what QB wants you to do. That's when QB starts becoming terrifying. Her main gameplay draw is her air dash. Her air dash is so dumb. It homes in on the opponent and will always track you no matter where you go. And she can instantly act out of it, getting her instant air dash overheads that, unless you're an absolute god, are unreactable. When you're crouching to hit her with crouching normals, what you're not doing is stand blocking. You basically have a huge sign on your head that says, hey, hit me with an overhead. I dare you. QB just eats tall crouchers alive, and you have the second tallest crouch animation. You have to deal with a lot for QB. On top of that, her pokes are really good. Crouching medium kick is plus four on block, and it goes super fucking far. Crouching medium punch also goes super far, and it's low. Most characters can crouch under QB stand medium punch. Oh, but not Victor, since he's so damn tall, you just gotta eat that forever. Oh yeah, and it's plus four on block, and she can do a dash medium punch to send her super far forward. So what the hell do you do, other than counter pick? Well, I'm from Chicago, and Chicago has no shortage of B players, so I know this matchup pretty well, and I'm gonna give you a couple of hints. First one I've known forever. I come from a Marvel background. I've played a lot of Marvel vs. Capcom, and in those games there's an old adage that you can't block everything, which is absolutely true for this matchup. You can't, and you shouldn't. The key is to not even be put in that mix-up situation. You want to avoid it as much as possible and pick up stray hits. B actually has very low defense. Not as low as Morgan's, but still pretty low. If you're trading blows back and forth, you'll win, but you gotta make sure you don't get locked down. Because once she has her pressure started, it's over. She's gonna hit you with so many highs, lows, overheads, grabs, whatever the hell she wants, that you're gonna die so quickly. Second adage is just control as much space as possible. Don't give her breathing room to get in. Jump Fierce, Neutral Jump Fierce, Jump Jab, and Lariats do a lot of work in this matchup for Neutral. She can't block when she's air dashing, so that will catch her a lot of times. And if you ever do find yourself the aggressor, where you actually do have momentum, do not let off of it. She has no invincible moves, and her guard cancel sucks, her defensive options aren't the best. So as long as she's blocking, she's not making you block, which means you're winning. One final thing I want to talk about is her Bubble Super. This isn't nearly as scary as Fish's Bubble Super, it's not an unblockable attack or anything. It's mainly just for screen control. It bounces around slowly and has a looming threat of something you'll eventually have to block. And once you block, B can just come in and make you block more. There's two ways to deal with this. Either A, jump into the bubble and block with your face just to make it get over with as fast as possible. Or B, just hit QB. The bubble's hitbox will go away as soon as QB's touched. That's all I can think about saying, but yeah, this matchup is just truly horrendous. If you counterpick for this matchup, no one's going to blame you. <laughs> 
If you haven't played a Sasquatch yet, consider yourself lucky. He's an absolute bitch to fight. Undeniably one of the two best characters in the game. While I don't think his matchup with Victor is as fundamentally flawed as QB's, it's still really, really annoying. This boy's got huge buttons and huge damage for very little work. Sasquatches don't have to do command supers through chains or EX confirms off of normals or anything like that. He just gets really good damage off of his normal ass chains. For footsies, you're gonna see a lot of sweeps, a lot of stand medium punches, and a lot of stand jabs. The medium punch especially is super annoying. We colloquially call it the stop sign. The hitbox is big, dumb, powerful, and comes out super fast. Now what really makes Sasquatch tick is his dash. He also has a hop dash, much like Felicia and Wolf. However, the amount of control he gets off of this is insane. He's able to cancel both his forward and back dash early, making it really ambiguous of when he's actually going to land. Seeing a good Sasquatch move around with short hops is a terrifying thing. A character that big should not have that much mobility. But he does, that's the world we live in. Welcome to VSAV. Now out of a normal forward dash, Sasquatch can usually sneak in two buttons. This counts as hitting overhead twice. However, his dashing roundhouse hits twice in itself, so that can mean up to three hits in an overhead string. This is one of your initial mix-ups, he either hits twice, or hits three times, and then goes for a low. And you just gotta pay attention to what he's actually doing. On the flip side, if he does a short hop, he either does one normal, or no normal, land immediately and go for a low. Or he can just go for a grab anytime too, he has one of the best command throws in the whole game. His big brunch command throw freezes you and allows it for a follow-up afterwards, which optimally can do huge damage, you pretty much lose half a life bar anytime you get grabbed. You can mash to get out of the ice earlier, but if he does an ES version of the Big Brunch command throw, the follow-up is pretty much guaranteed. You might think to chicken guard a lot, but Sasquatch got a lot of tools to deal with that. Primarily the aforementioned stop sign and his crouching fierce. And a lot like Victor, Sasquatch loves when he hits you out of the air. He gets an air reset and doesn't have to read a tech roll off of a knockdown. This leads to more guaranteed pressure and you having to block 18 short hop medium punches in a row and it just gets fucking annoying, honestly. Defensively, Sasquatch is no slouch either. His Guard Cancel is his Typhoon Kick, which normally does a huge amount of damage, but Guard Cancel's damages get cut in half, it still does a great amount of damage, and the hitbox is massive. That's which also has what I like to call the Neutral Maker, aka his Ice Towers. The normal version in itself is a pretty okay anti-air, but the really dumb part is the ES version. For one bar, Sasquatch can create a wave of ice that covers the entire ground. This thing comes out in 9 frames and is honestly one of the most abusable tools in the game. The tower hitboxes are huge and hard to get over and will always push you back to at least mid-screen. It knocks down on hit and is extremely hard to punish. If the Sasquatch feels like he doesn't want to play the game anymore, he's just gonna mash ES Heist Towers until he runs out of meter. I swear, it's so dumb. Small aside here, but I briefly want to talk about Sasquatch's Dark Force. He has two, but you'll probably only ever see the one that gives him hyper armor. The hyper armor is great, but the real plus of this Dark Force is the fact that he can do air chains out of his dash. He can hit to up to like five times out of a dash. It's really fucking annoying to deal with. I don't know why he needed this Dark Force. So yeah, just be wary that's a thing. You won't see it too much, but when you do, it's just so annoying. Yeah, that's about it. Sasquatch's mix-ups aren't as stupid and unreactable as these mix-ups, but they are really fast. A trained eye can see between them though, so look out for that. Just push block your heart out and throw a Lariat out in neutral every once in a while. It hits at the perfect height to hit a dash when he's coming in. <laughs> Now, I've always been under the strong impression that mirror matches in every single game are fucking stupid. Like, I play Makoto in Third Strike. Makoto mirror matches are fucking stupid. I play Grant in Garo. Grant mirror matches are fucking stupid. I play Faust in Guilty Gear. Faust mirror matches are fucking stupid. And Victor vs. Victor is fucking stupid. If you've been watching these videos up to this point, I don't really need to go into this matchup all that much. You know what Victor can do and what Victor can't do. You know what his strengths are and what his weaknesses are. I will, however, note that Victor is very tall, so things Victor can do to abuse taller characters, he can do on himself. Honestly, every Victor matchup I ever played just revolves around who gets the first electric crouching fears, and then it's just downhill from there. Instead of fighting your fellow Victor brethren, I recommend just inviting them out for drinks, and maybe you can talk over the dispute instead of slugging it out in the ring. <laughs> Zabel is widely considered to be the best character in the game, and for very, very good reasons. Excluding a projectile, Zabel has pretty much every tool you could ask for in a character. He's got massive, fast, fucking dulcimesque normals, huge damage and easy to confirm supers, enough speed and mobility to make Sonic the Hedgehog lie awake crying at night, he's got command throws, unblockable full screen attacks, teleports, and a fucking crawl. Honestly, what are you doing playing Victor right now? Just go pick up Zabel, really, he's that 
good. Nah, nah, I kid. The one downside to Zable is that he's actually pretty technical, so you won't see him a lot at lower levels, but once you get up there in the ranks, you're gonna see him a whole lot. I really don't even know where to start with talking about the matchup. He's basically just a bee who can actually do damage. He's got an amazing air dash that's super fast and a plethora of fantastic aerials that cover every angle you can think of. The same thing I said about B I'm gonna say here. Just don't try and block everything. You can't block forever against this character. You will get opened up eventually, and when he does, he's gonna convert into a super and just do crazy good damage. Sometimes you don't even get the choice to block. Raptor's jump light kick is bugged. If it hits on its last active frame, it's unblockable. Just completely unblockable, there's nothing you can do about it. Thankfully, it's kinda hard to get this thing to hit meaty, but since you're so big, it's easier on you than other characters. I don't even need to go through any of his other aerials. They're all amazing. Every single one of them has a use. Maybe you want to look out most for jump heavy kick just because it's so fucking big. On the ground, all the standing normals have an extended version if he presses forward in a button. All of them are great and can be chained into himself. I especially want to talk about 6 LP though, because it's special cancelable and can combo into death voltage. This alone gives him some of the highest damage range punishes in the whole game. It's crazy. And yeah, why not? Let's just talk about death voltage real quick and how fucking stupid that is. This move comes out in 7, fucking 7 frames is huge and instantly travels across the screen. Massive damage, super easy to confirm, just... I, why? Fuckers will mash this in neutral, watch out. Bro, I'm basically just ranting about this character honestly at this point. I, I hate Zable, and you will too if you have to fight him a lot. His evil grin special move is also super easily confirmable. He just has to press light kick twice, and then he gets it, and you eat a whole bunch of damage for no reason. He's also got Hell Dunk, an unblockable full screen EX move. This one does telegraph a bit, so you can see when it's coming up and jump it, but still, why? Why does he have it? It's so... Why? Now defensively, Zable's gonna try and air-to-air -air you a lot instead of anti-air you. His anti-air is only hit at very specific ranges, except for Stand Roundhouse, which hits everywhere. And if he gets that air-to-air, -air, you're in an air reset. You have to land on your feet, he gets a free mix-up after that. It's just, uh, I, I hate him! If he's pressing 1 or 3, he actually has a crawl animation across the floor. This means if he's jumping in, he can basically crawl backwards and block at the same time, nullifying any chance he might get of actually getting a command throw. Okay, let's say somehow you do actually get some momentum on your side and you start pressuring Zable. What do you do? Well, not fucking much, because his guard cancel's insane. It comes out crazy fast and has a great hitbox on it. And the ES1, get this, the ES1 causes an unteckable knockdown. You know what that means? Afterwards, he can jump in and get a guaranteed unblockable jump light kick, confirm into a super, and there, a health bar is just gone. Maybe somehow Zable doesn't have a bar and he can't do an ES guard cancel. Well, not to fucking worry, because he has an invincible teleport that's invincible on frame one! Bro, honestly, I'm gonna fucking pop a blood vessel if I talk about this character anymore. He's just stupid. He's got a winning matchup against every character in the cast, so it's not even that optimal to counterpick him. My biggest advice is don't try and beat Zable. Try and beat your opponent. Learn their patterns. Try and get around them. Don't try and get around Zable, because you can't. He's so fucking good. But humans are flawed. You can see their patterns. You can get through this. Just try your best. I promise. It will pay off eventually. I promise. Just stick with it. You'll figure it out. And yeah, that's every character, which means we're pretty much done with this tutorial. But don't leave yet. I do have one last thing I want to go over. If you've made it this far in the tutorial, then I have to say, congratulations, you did it. You're the best Victor player in the world now. You know everything there is to know about this game. Or do you? Have you been checking out the links I've been telling you to check out? I've linked them in the description of all these videos. Even so, I have a lot more I'm gonna link in this one. These are the videos I watched to learn Vampire Savior. There isn't a lot of resources out there for this game, despite it being so old, so everything you can get is helpful, and I recommend watching all of them. If you have any questions, my comment sections are always open and I'll be looking at them thoroughly. I'm not that big of a channel to ignore any person that comments on my stuff. <laughs> I want to take some time here to plug the Vampire Savior Discord too, it's honestly a fantastic place. It's active as hell and filled up with players of every single skill level, from baby new to some of the best in the world. And I've really never seen a community that is so dedicated to helping out its newer players. It's one of the only places I know that if you ask a question, pretty much everyone will fight over each other to see who can answer it the best. I'm in there talking all the time, 
time some of the other pro players are in there and we'll all help you and everyone's open down for matches too. We have at least two online tournaments a week every single week too that goes through fight caves and people from all skill levels join. It's really truly honestly a great place to learn this game. So if you're not already in the discord I highly highly recommend clicking the link to join it. It's fantastic. Now if you're still with us I just really want to say from the bottom of my heart just Thank you. Thank you for watching this. I did pretty much everything for this video. I did all the voiceover, I did the scripting, I recorded footage, I edited the video, all of that 100% me. I have never made anything remotely like this before. I learned how to make and edit a video to make and edit this video. And I did it all to benefit the community I love and spread the awareness for a character I love to play. So I really truly thank you for taking the time to watch all this. It means a lot. If you want to support me, liking, subscribing is good and all that, but what I really, really want is criticism. Again, I've never made anything like this, ever in my life. It's my first time, and I really want to improve. The one thing I love more than anything, even more than blind, like, reassurance, is just criticism. I love criticism. In the comments, please tell me, could I have done something better? Is there something you would have changed? Is there, did I get some information wrong? I would love it if you did that for me. All the music you heard in these videos comes from the Darkstalker series, except for my two outro songs. The one you're hearing right now is Acoustic Anarchy by D Damage, and the song you hear in the true outro is uh, Someday by Ween. Two bands I love, I want you to check them out. I want to take some time to help thank some of the people that made this three month long crazy journey all worth it. First and foremost, I want to thank the artist who drew these cool transition slides and thumbnails that you're seeing right now. Her name is MK Maffo, and I love her to death. I really can't have enough positive things to say about her. She's helped me with numerous projects at this time, and she's just an absolute joy to work with. She's a good friend of mine, and I have a huge friend crush on her. If you were to follow one person I told you to follow through all these videos, go follow her. Don't even follow me, follow her. That's the way she makes her income. She's one of my absolute favorite artists, and I would love if you guys could show her some support. Second, I want to thank Schadenfreulein, aka my wife. She's the one that got me into the VSAF community initially, and I can't thank her enough for that. She helped me record a few bits and chunks of this video, and did some proofreading for me. I... I love her, I really do, and I can't overstate how much I love her. That's why I use that Ween song to end all my videos, it's because it reminds me of her, and I... <laughs> I, I know she watches these videos. Izzy, I really do love you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Next is a twofer. I want to thank Everything Whiffs and Kyle W. Both of them helped me proofread and fact check this video. This video probably would have been full of inaccuracies without them, so I can't thank them enough. You guys really, really did help me. Next, I want to thank the Chicago VSAV community. All y'all have been helping me improve so much. It's weird to think I've only been playing this game for about three years. It's just how much I've improved thanks to all you guys. You know who you are. I love every single one of you equally. Thank you so much. I want to give a special shout out to a couple of players, especially Typhus, Mighty Mar, Rev, and Kame. These were kind of the people who taught me how to play Victor, all in their own special way. You guys were especially helpful for me learning this character. I know it's been a long road, but y'all Y'all did a lot. You really deserve a lot of praise. Also, Gadget Guru, if you're watching this video, I haven't been in contact with you in a while, but you helped me a lot through the early old days. I really want to get back in contact with you. Please message me. Shout out to the Vampire Arcadia guys. They're the guys who made a lot of the videos that I'm blinking throughout all of this. Those videos helped me a lot learning the game initially, so now I want to pass them on to all of you guys. They keep the tournament scene alive for this game, and they deserve a lot of credit for that. Also, just as a side across, if any of you VMP boys are looking to sponsor anyone, I'm open. I don't even want any money, I just want to put VMP in my name. That's all I'm asking, man. Okay, jokes aside, I also want to thank the entirety of the Vampire Savior Discord. All of y'all have been amazing and really good with information. I love playing all y'all in Fightcade. Y'all great. I also want to give a special shout out to everyone whose footage I used in Fightcade matches. Y'all helped a ton. All, everyone I've been messaging has helped me out a ton, and I want to give equal credit to all of them. They're all amazing. I'm going to blabber on forever if I talk about everyone, so I'm going to cut it here. Thank you again so much for watching this. Join the Discord, play Vampire Savior, love this game. Whatever you do, just play Vampire Savior. It's such a good game. And with all that, I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Trax, signing off. Stay free, everyone.
day.